Hi everyone, this is Dr. Stefan. Welcome to another video. In this one, it's about inhalers again, but I've got a super interesting question. So, uh, do the dry inhalers over a period of extensive usage accumulate in the powder in the airways, further restricting the airflow into and out of the lungs? Super interesting question. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people have thought about this because if you are using an inhaler and you're inhaling some powder that you can actually sometimes see in your hand, if you shake the inhaler, if you use a capsule that you, you see has some little powder inside and you keep inhaling that and you, you might wonder what's happening to all that powder? Where does it go? So all I can say in short is that it shouldn't accumulate. I think that's unlikely. And there's a few reasons for that. So the first one, um, is to do that this is a specific point in uh, medical research for inhalers. So this del these delivery systems, so the powder that you're inhaling is actually, uh, the drug is, that powder contains more than just the medication that's being administered. It contains a lot of other things that makes the powder, um, so all kinds of agents are included in there. There's it creates a powder that has specific properties. So it needs to have a specific particle size. So each grain of that powder has a specific weight and particle size because that uh, particle size determines how deep within the lungs um, that, in, that powder ends up so this is really important because if you're start if you're trying to treat maybe smaller airways you need to use smaller particles that go deeper but if the particles are too small they don't tend to deposit very well so it, there's a lot of science it's a lot of physics involved if you can imagine uh, a very long tube and dust goes in through one one side it's being aspirated within that tube you can imagine that the heavier particles deposit at the big the heavier larger particles drop at the beginning because of gravity whilst the smaller ones go and deposit further and further back but if they're, if they're really small they stay within a suspension so you end up breathing them out so it's uh, so basically the, the size of the part it's really interesting but I'm just starting to with the, this enthusiasm. Sorry about that. If maybe the, it goes a little bit off on a tangent, but um, what I'm trying to say is that this is actually something that's really studied very intensely. How big the particles need to be to penetrate to different levels of the lungs. This is one point. The second point is that in preclinical studies, so basically in animal studies, um, this is actually studied for inhalers whether the particles accumulate within the lungs and it's actually a very important safety signal before any inhaler goes into human studies. So this is a really really important point because for example in a mouse if that uh, inhaler that powder actually ends up building up in the lungs that's an unsafe medication. So another formulation needs to be used for that powder um, so that it's safe. So the other point that I'd like to make, so even if, for, let's say, an inhaler passes through that preclinical pre -clinical study, it goes into human use, then you have different stages of study. So you have the first in human studies, you have the dose escalation studies, we're trying to find the right dose for people. Um, people are being followed up in these studies to see how uh, they actually feel well on the inhalers are they developing any other things there's quite a lot of investigations that uh, that take part at that phase one level of research and then uh, that inhaler is then being studied into progressively bigger and bigger studies just to make sure that we are safe now this is kind of the theory and the safety barriers that are in place to make sure that an inhaler even if it contains dry powder doesn't make it onto the market and it's unsafe for human use but then also, if you think about it from a theoretical perspective, you inhale particles in the lungs all the time. You might go through a dusty place. Let's say you enter a room um, that's being painted, there's decorated, there's lots of dust in there. You might, at the end of that day, if you spend some time in there, or if you've ever been into the London tube and the London metro system, at the end of the day, you will <laughs> maybe cough up some particles, some of the powder that you've inhaled throughout the day. So, so that's actually because you've got mucus within the airways. So everything that you inhale tends to get trapped in the mucus that tends to be moved out by some ciliary cells, some hair-like structures within the airways that keep moving that mucus up. And you end up coughing it out or swallowing it because that mucus comes out of the airway all the time, daily. 
So that's another protective mechanism that suggests that there is very little lung accumulation from the dust, from the powders that it's being inhaled from from that inhaler device. So I hope this um, reassures some of you who are wondering what's happening to that powder. The short answer is that it doesn't tend to accumulate. It should be un it's very very unlikely that that will happen because this is specifically studied so that it doesn't happen and then also your lung and your airways have a protective mechanism to take that powder out because the particle just delivers the medication it's the right size to deliver the medication to the right part of the lung the medication diffuses out of that dust particle let's say and then the dust is cleared out so that's how that delivery system actually works hopefully this makes sense uh, i'll try and clarify it in a future video again um, i'll think about maybe a schematic for that one Thanks for watching, all the best and good health.